Well, hello again, it's Tony. Uh, I'd just like to welcome you back to another video of mine. Uh, today I'm very excited. Uh, today I have a special uh, item to be showcasing on my YouTube page. And uh, about a month ago, uh, Frank over at m14.ca PM'd me and asked me uh, if I'd like to do a video on one of his stocks. So he sent me uh, this uh, m14.ca um, aluminum chassis system. Okay, and so I'm just going to go over some of the features and show you how to install this uh, on a rifle. Um, it is a beautifully machined piece of, uh, of aluminum. Uh, it's uh, very, very modular. It's introducing something to the M14 that's been lacking, uh, which is modularity. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few features that he's designed into it uh, to give you a better idea of what this stock is supposed to be. Okay. So actually what you're looking at here isn't just one single um, stock. This is actually a bunch of different pieces that have been bolted together. Okay, so right here we've got the main stock. Uh, this rate weighs roughly two pounds. This component back here actually is can be removed from the stock and the whole back end can be reconfigured the way you like to. In the future you can actually put an AR-15 stock here. Any AR-15 stock is what you can put. Now, the goal of this stock is to make the lightest possible modern-day aluminum chassis system uh, to go on an M14 or an M1A. Because of that, it was designed specifically not to accommodate heavy profile barrels. The goal is to accommodate any barrel that uses a standard USGI diameter operating rod guide. Now, that operating rod guide will be removed and we'll be installing their proprietary operating rod guide which basically bolts in to the bottom of the stock with just a simple uh, GI tool or a 3 8 boxed in wrench and that is all that's required and that's it. Once you remove that screw you can take the entire rifle down for disassembly. Now they also sent me the Scout handguard and this handguard actually attaches to the barrel. It has somewhat of a moderate press fit onto the operating rod guide uh, so when you install it um, there's going to be some special care. You can actually order this scalp handguard completely separately. Okay, and just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. Okay, and it just basically clamps around a standard profile uh, GIM 14 barrel. It won't work on medium weight or heavy weight barrels. Maybe in the future they may come out with those, but uh, as of now, that is the only one that's available. Okay, and it's made to work with the Black Feather stock system. And here you can see the operating rod guide. Um, again, it's secured by one 3 8 bolt, okay, and again, you've got the aluminum chassis system here, and again, since his goal was to create the lightest possible M14 platform, he went with a, a skeletonized stock, stock, and again, you can actually, you can take this off and you can put your own AR-15 stock, an A2 butt stock, I've seen a couple of guys do that, um, but with this chassis system, just like this, if you install a standard GI profile 18 inch barreled um, M14 or 18 and a half inch barreled M14, the overall weight is going to be an astonishing 8.2 pounds roughly and somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, this stock is almost two pounds lighter than a Sage stock system. And it, again, it's very, very, um, it's very customizable or at least it will be much more customizable in the future. And again, you can see this crease or this this line right here indicates the two separate parts okay and I'll go ahead and separate these at some point in time and show you how to do that um, it also comes with provisions for Picatinny rails to bolt anywhere that you have these slots okay and uh, it already comes with one permanently milled onto the bottom you can put another one down here again anywhere you see these holes uh, they have Picatinny rail slots that are or Picatinny rail sections that can be attached um, to your liking, however you like it. Um, and it also comes with this nice quick disconnect swivel here, okay, and so how he worked it, um, I just went ahead and just popped that off, how he worked it is there's an insert that just requires a quarter inch Allen wrench and you can take that insert off completely out, okay, 
and you can relocate that insert back here in the uh, in the back part of the stock just behind the receiver and then you can get your quick disconnect swivel and you can pop that in right there and you've got a rear uh, sling point attachment and you can put it on either side to your liking so left side right side uh, front and center it's it's all up to you and then there's also this one back here uh, that's on the uh, that's on the stock. Now there's also a Picatinny section back here on the very bottom that you can put a monopod, adjustable monopod, so if you put a bipod in the front and a monopod in the rear, you can have a three-point uh, stabilization system. I don't know what the tactical term is for it, uh, but for, for precision uh, for precision applications, that's what you can have here. Now also he sent me the, uh, the chasm mount. Okay, now this mount this is an aluminum one, but it's also available in steel. And it's very, very light and is made to replace the original GI sights. Not, not as a replacement for them, but it goes in place of the GI sights. And it uses that sight pocket, sits in there, and if you subtract the weight of the steel GI sights with this aluminum mount, uh, you only add approximately one ounce to the overall weight of the rifle. Okay, and uh, the you have a couple of... Uh, countersunk screws that fit into the to the rear sight ears and some stabilization screws in the back here another stabilization screw up here and then a front end stabilization screw right there okay and uh, I'll be trying this out and there's also a cool little feature right there in the very back you see a little hole um, that if for some reason you decide you want to still use that front sight you can peep through that hole it's not a very good rear sight it's meant to be as a literally a, a desperate emergency type back sight uh, that's uh, you know completely not adjustable. So it's just a hole drilled in there. You say yes, I can actually use the rear sights really close range if for some reason I need to. Okay, and also another cool feature with this uh, with this operating rod guide that you see here, it's actually uh, completely reversible. It's uh, or what symmetrical. It basically goes in any way that you. There, there's no way to mess it up. Um, versus the the uh, the other chassis system that it's offset, it's thicker on one side than it is on the other, and you can actually install it backwards, in which case you'd have to hammer it back off and then uh, reinstall it. And this also has some uh, barrel tensioning screws, right? It has three, it has three different locations that, um, that you can adjust some tension and possibly uh, tune your accuracy for a certain load. And we'll play with that later. And in here you can see the two screw holes back here that allow this uh, this back section to come off completely. Okay. So again, what it was really cool was like say for guys in uh, California uh, living behind enemy lines, they can't have anything with a pistol grip, or they can, but it makes things complicated or a lot more restrictive. What they can do is they can take this section off later, and they can design more of a traditional rifle stock that doesn't have a pistol grip and that can be another option for guys in California. Now also, at the moment, this rifle was designed around GIM 14s but also since it was made in Canada, by the way, M14.ca, it's a Canadian company, but they have the exporting licenses now, and they have a U.S. distributor um, that, that, you can, uh, that you can go through to obtain these now. Now, in Canada, there's a lot of polytechs, and uh, they're actually pretty good, pretty good you know, well-made receivers and this stock is made to fit in those receivers. Now those receivers, the connector lock pin, which is the pin that holds the operating rod spring guide in place, well, on Springfield Armory M1As and pretty much any US M14 clone, that pin overhangs the receiver and the stocks that we have in the US are usually cleared for that extra pin that sticks out from the side. However, this one does not have a clearance for that, so if you're gonna put this in an M1A that has a pin that protrudes from the flush side of the, of the right side of the receiver, uh, you're going to have to shave that pin, but we'll go over that later as well. So just something else to, to be mindful of when you pick up one of these. And by the way, all the screw locations all reinforce with a steel insert, so you're not screwing, you're never actually screwing into aluminum. But what they do, he has a bunch of steel inserts that are basically embedded or somehow attached into the aluminum, so you're, you always, it's always a steel on steel connection 
uh, for anything that screws in. Okay. By the way, another uh, feature that that was highlighted to me when this was sent to me was basically this was designed to shift the weight of the balance roughly towards the center of the receiver. Okay, so because of that, he kept the uh, the original GI profile, kind of like that fish belly look on the stock. Okay, from the, that you'd find on a GI stock versus um, the other chassis systems, which is basically completely square. Uh, they're they're very very thick and very robust as well. However, they make the rifle balance much more front heavy. And the goal of this stock again was to keep it light, but to also shift the balance so that as you swing this around, um, you don't have as much weight out in the front. So this was meant to be, you know, very maneuverable. And by the way, um, you'll also notice the way that this stock is made. The way that this back half insert. Um, again, this can be changed at any time, but the only one that I know of that he makes right now is this one. And this is designed so that the heel of the receiver sits down in this pocket. So by nature, this is already set up for a scope. So there is no cheek riser required, um, especially when used in conjunction with his chasm mount. But uh, it will work with other scope mounts as well. So that's one thing that's nice. If you already have a scope mount, you can still use it. You can use a basset or, or a... Um, uh, a sad lack or something. Okay, so you'll notice when I bring my cheek weld up here, if the receiver sits down here, somewhere up here is going to be the, but the rear sight's going to be about right here, so the scope's going to be somewhere up around this area right here. Okay, um, so again, this is already, many, already meant to be a scope ready system that doesn't require a cheek riser or anything like that. The other feature of this stock that was designed into it that, that, was, that was intentional was the ability to to be able to swap different rifles into the same stock. All that's required to do that is the purchase of another operating rod guide. So the, the theory or the, the design is a, so that you take that one screw out, you unlatch your trigger group and you pull the, the, the receiver out and this operating rod guide comes out and it stays with the rifle, with the host rifle. And if you have another rifle that already has an operating rod guide that's been set up, it drops right in and you can bolt it right into the chassis again, again with, with a single bolt. And that will give you some modularity. If you only want one stock, but you have multiple rifles that you'd like to drop it into, um, that's, a, that's, that's an option. Well, I went in and took the opportunity, and I took that stock. Literally, all I did was unscrew it from the back here, and there's a uh, there's a plate that basically uh, cleans up the the mounting point right there, and the stock basically screws right into the back there, and it's got a rubber O-ring that keeps everything nice and tight and secure. So what you can see now, once I've got the stock off, you literally have like this pistol grip looking stock um, for your for your M1A or M14, and you can see right here, this is all that's required to, to take off this whole back end. So I went ahead and got a, uh, just a 3 8 socket. So that's the only thing you're actually going to need a 3 8 socket if you want to take off this back half of the stock. So I went ahead and took it off, and here it is. There's the three holes, and again, it looks like it has provisions for, um, for other options in the future. It actually has two different holes. So it tells me he's got something else planned for later. And this is the back half. So with this point here, this is the section that um, I believe weighs only two pounds. Okay. And from this point, you can customize everything on the back half. And again, it's a, it's a relatively new company, um, or at least it's an up, up and coming company that has uh, some pretty good options right now, but the future is pretty much wide open with this kind of a modular design that he's gone ahead and, and come up with. Okay. And give you some other you know, close-up shots here. And I'll go ahead and get back into some more uh, detailed shots of this in another video, okay? So another thing that I'm noticing about this stock that really appeals to me is that since this back half is completely modular and we're not slave to having a, uh, like, like AR-15s, where they have to have this back, back area that they can't fold over, uh, we can actually have a folding stock on this. 
and there have been a couple of configurations that they've done up in Canada where they put a folding AR-15 stock and they fold it off to the left and they put a SOCOM 16 upper um, or action in here and it was really a very short lightweight compact package uh, the shortest and, and most compact that I think I've ever seen as far as uh, an M1A or M14 platform goes so uh, kudos to them for coming up with this kind of a um, concept that allows us to do that. So what I wanted to show you real quickly uh, was the uh, customizable Picatinny rails. Again, you can put them at any location. Uh, this is the these are the actual Picatinny rails themselves. You see, they got a couple of those uh, these uh, these uh, oval shaped uh, or oblong oblong uh, shaped slots or that that fit into these slots here on the rail. So you can just get your your Picatinny rail sections and bolt them on at any location you want. You get here. Back here, uh, again, wherever there's a slot, you can put it. You can put it down here on the bottom, okay? And just for an example, I went ahead and put this one right here. So if you want to put a weapon light or something like that, got your bipod up here and your weapon light here. Um, also, what I wanted to mention was the stock as this is right now with these two Picatinny, say, Picatinny rail sections. Uh, this system right here, without the chasm mount, without the handguard, this is going to weigh in at 2.8 pounds. 